everybody, what's going on? It is week seven in the NFL. It's about to be week seven in the NFL. And you know what that means? It's Wednesday night, and we're ready for the Roto World Roto Grinders DFS Pick Six. We're on rotogrinders.com. Of course, I'm Eric Grant, and I'm joined by two of the best in the business. We got Rich Rebar, Lord Reeves. What's up, man? Crane, man, what's happening? Week seven already. You know, uh, you guys wanted me to save my story because I was telling Dev how, how much I took a bath uh, last weekend. So they wanted me to save my my story and my swappage of what I did on Sunday morning. Uh, I think I mentioned on the show that I, I, I play like all, all my cash games I play on FanDuel. I think it's just a, you know, I have a lot more success there beating. I, I count on the FanDuel cash game to fund everything I play elsewhere. <laughs> and last week I had this lineup said it was hot. I was remembering I was tweeting my buddy, JJ Zachary said, you guys know him. That's not a humble brag. Uh, but you know, I had James Connor in my lineup. I had Tyler Boyd. This, this lineup was fire. It was good. I was feeling good about it. Then Dalvin Cook is officially out. Got to jam Latavius Murray and everywhere. I said, I got a little extra money. I'll swap out Connor. I'll go to Christian McCaffrey. I'll take Boyd out. Let's roll the dice, man. I feel like it's going to be a shootout in London. I'll put Amari Cooper in this lineup, oh, too. Oh, <laughs> Dude, oh, oh my God. Cool. Dude, cool. my wife kicked me out. I'm on location. <laughs> like, I'm just – I'm in the shed. Just out here. Just took a bath. It was horrible. <laughs> Uh, but we're going to make up for it week seven because uh, it's C.J. Beathard week, gents. Hey, it's C.J. Beathard week, and guess what? It's not Amari Cooper week this week, and it may never be again after he died on the field last week. And also joining us, we got Evan Silva. Mr. Silva, did you have a better week than Mr. Reeves? Um, I was definitely – I mean, it's, it was one of those weeks where I felt like I just got everything wrong. Um, thankfully, I didn't take too bad of a bath, and that was because I had a lot of Case Keenum, who was top 15 last week just so you know crane uh, don't no, make me I'm, walk I'm, off again yeah. it's too early in the show okay. he did have over 20 fantasy points though uh just so you know and uh, and him paired with emmanuel sanders was a winning combination um but uh this week i think that you know i'm really excited about this slate i think it's a really high scoring slate uh one of the other things that we talked about uh before the show when you guys were trying to give away all, all the good stuff uh was that the thursday through monday is white hot, man. I mean, um, first of all, I think that the Cardinals defense on Thursday is an awesome play at home against the Broncos. And then on the back end, uh, Saquon is the, the, the money night hammer. Uh, so I, I would you know, encourage the listeners to, you know, if you could come up with some good lineups for that Thursday, Monday, um, I would encourage people to play that. Yeah, if you guys are playing the Thursday Monday slate and you don't have exposure to these like these island games, especially the primetime games on Sunday and Monday with the Chiefs on the slate, the Bengals and the Giants and Falcons and Saquon and the entire Falcons offense, you ain't gonna be feeling so good about your leg. Can you imagine if you sit there and you know what's gonna happen? People are gonna be tweeting out pictures of hey, oh, my Sunday Thursday line for crushing. Look at all this money I'm winning, and it's gonna happen at like seven o'clock on Sunday night. And those guys are just going to get killed because these, like you said, Evan, these nighttime games on the prime time this weekend, they are hot fire. So Reeves, how we doing, man? You about ready to jump into the slate? Let's do it, bro. All right. Well, let's start off with Cleveland at Tampa, a total of 50 in Tampa. They're three point favorites at home. And I got to talk about Mr. Baker Mayfield because we talked about some stuff we did last week that was maybe not the smartest thing ever. Last week, I fell in love with Baker Mayfield later in the week. And, you know, initially I said, you know, I'm just going to lock in Matt Ryan. I'm just going to, you know, there's nothing not to like about Matt Ryan here. And then Sunday morning rolls around, feeling a little frisky, feeling a little excited. And I said, Baker, let's do it, buddy. And uh, Reeves, please tell me it's going to be a better week this week. Yeah, it should be. I mean, uh, you look at what Baker Mayfield's done the past two weeks. It hasn't been all that impressive. Uh, They've had a boatload of drives, too, if you even go back three weeks to that Raiders game. He's averaging about 15 possessions per game. Um, last week, I kind of thought would be a little more of a struggle for him still against the Chargers. You have kind of started to right the ship a little bit, and they were all over him, man. He threw two dimes, though, early in that game, one to uh, our boy Antonio Callaway, who has been one of the worst receivers in the NFL this season that he kind of like short arm. He's dead to and, me. And then rookie sixth-rounder Damian Ratley had a ball that he probably should have scored on, too, that he kind of – I don't know if he lost it in the sun or really what was the story – but, uh, yeah, Mayfield hasn't played well, but I think we can kind of forgive him. If you don't play well against the Ravens and you don't play well against the Chargers, I think that can be kind of forgiven as long as you crush the matchups you're supposed to, which is what he has this week. Tampa Bay is a lot of 300-yard passer in every game this season. Just listen to some of the stats Tampa Bay ranks last in the league in 
I'm ready. They rank, la- they rank last in completion rate allowed. 76.8% of passes are being completed against them. They rank last in yards per attempt, 9.3 yards. They rank last in touchdown rate, 8.8% to opposing passers. They rank last in passing points range. And just fantasy passing points, they allow 27.1 passing points per game to opposing passers. Uh, if he, he can't crush this spot um, where he should be like the top streamer on the board this week, I mean, then, then Baker's got, got some explaining to do. Yeah, I mean, it's – if Baker doesn't crush this week, like I, I just have to quit him. You know, it's like, you know, I know I said if Julio doesn't get in the box last week, I have to quit him, and that ain't happening, of course. But Evan, like if Baker's going to do it, this is the week, isn't it? Tampa just keeps giving up big games to quarterbacks. Yeah, I mean, on pace to uh, be one of the worst defenses in NFL history, and um, they fired their defensive coordinator. So, you know, the immediate reaction from everyone is like, oh, well, what, you know, what's the new – defensive coordinator going to do well guess what mark duffner is a mike smith disciple uh came up under him uh in jacksonville linebackers coach i mean there's a reason that he was on mike smith's staff uh and he only has a week anyways to uh you know make any changes um also it looks like gerald mccoy might be out for tampa bay due to a calf injury um you look at the splits uh the on off splits with uh, Gerald McCoy for the Bucks defense over the past like five years, just, you know, it gets even worse somehow gets even worse. Um, but, you know, I uh, watched Mark Duffner, the, the new, the interim defensive coordinator for the Bucks his uh, press conference today. And uh, he was like, we got to stop the run. You know, we, uh, <laughs> that's one of my, my core philosophies. We got to stop the run. And that happened to me, the core philosophy for the Bucks. And guess what? The Bucks have stopped the run. The Bucks have actually been really, really good against the run, um, but their defense is awful. It's kind of similar to the Browns last year, uh, where they were really good against the run, but they were, you know, one of the easiest teams to score points and, and move the ball against. Because stopping the run is actually a minus EV plan. Yeah, just because you know. Passing is a little bit worth a little bit more than running the football, especially in today's NFL. Ryan, Ryan Smith also left that game with a concussion, and they might have to activate their the rookie that they that they have pl- been healthy and active, Carlton Davis. They benched early in the season, who was just awful in the preseason as well. So he might be up for this game too. Like if for those of us who played Baker last week, we just watched that game and we just see him get pounded and pounded and pounded. It's, it's going to be tough for me to click the button again this week, but at the same time, I look at this price tag too. Just 5.8 over on DraftKings against the team in Tampa that, like we said, just gives up tons of points. Reeves, like, if you're playing cash games, he's got to be in there, right? Well, no, because there's someone else we're going to talk about. But, he, yeah, but sure. Yeah, but he's he's a prime option and, and priced on both those sites. Both sites uh, affordably to jam in there. Like you said, the floor has been so good. You allow 300-yard passer uh, in every game. I'm more looking at, too, like what are we going to do with these pass catchers, though, for the Browns? Because that's who we really want to target, especially where these guys are priced. I mean, you look at since Baker has taken over, uh, the wide receivers have been been a problem. But the Browns wide receivers, in terms of completion rate, targets of completion rate, are ahead of only the Bills in the NFL. They're under 47% completion rate to wide receivers as a team. Uh, you know, Jarvis Landry has really had a really low floor creep in due to, uh, you know, kind of uncatchable targets and how many he's getting. Since Baker's taken over, he's in the three starts, he's only caught 11 of 29 targets. Pro Football Focus has just 13 of those targets as catchable targets. He dropped the other two. Um, so, I mean, but you look at the Bucks; they've allowed 8.4 catches, 22 and a half PPR points to everybody's lead wide receivers. The only lead wide receiver that hasn't scored against them was last week. Our guy Julio couldn't get in the paint. Um, but you know, I Jarvis told you is, guys, man, I told you. Jar- Jarvis is priced way down, but the guy that's priced really, really cheaply on both sites is David Njoku, and he's a guy that's actually been balling since Baker took over. Well, he's balling in the sense of what his position entails. I mean, he's third in tight ends of all targets, third in catches, sixth in receiving yards, sixth in fantasy points uh, since Baker has come and been the starter. Uh, the Bucks have allowed a top 12 tight end in every game this season. They're the only team to do so. They're allowing a league high 97.2 receiving yards per game to tight ends. I mean, Joku is the guy I think that you can you can easily get in the lineups this week and is the guy that should smash because, one, he's already been good when Mayfield's been kind of up and down, and, two, he just lines up to smash right here. 
Yeah, I mean, Njoku's in a phenomenal spot. And Reeves, when you said one guy who's cheap, I thought you were going to talk about somebody else, another guy who I just never want to play again. That's Antonio Callaway. He's 4.3K. He keeps, keeps seeing targets. And Evan, we talk about air yards. He's, you know, as far as, uh, you know, positive regression coming, he's on that list too. But Evan, I think Antonio Callaway just might be bad at football. Oh, man, I don't know. I'm not ready to say that. I'm not ready to say he did right. not. He did not play football in 2017. He did not play football. Neither did I, but I don't drop this many passes. Oh, jeez. I mean, yeah, you hadn't thought of it what, like that. What you? was that? What was our uh, early season discussion? Could I, I cover Eric Tomlinson? Yeah, Eric Tomlinson. Yeah. Yeah, man, you, you, <laughs> you overestimate yourself, Crane. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, he's dropped a lot of passes, you know, that that's, there's no question. Um, man, I, he's still so alluring to me. I mean, 4,800. They have no one else to play. I know he was, he played 97% of the snaps last week. He had 10 targets. Okay. He's going to drop a couple probably, probably, but my goodness, this is the best case scenario matchup. Um, Baker keeps going to him. Like, this is one thing I love about Baker. He just, He's kind of like D Gaff, you know, he, I mean, he, he came up with, you know, Antonio Callaway, like that's his boy and he's going to keep on going to him and there's nothing that the Browns can do. Rashard Higgins is not coming back this week. Uh, Damian Ratley, by the way, he also dropped a touchdown last week. Um, he's kind of interesting by the way, you know, and he's not a guy that, that people are going to even think about because he, he's only been on the radar for one week. He led the team in receiving last week david and joku as reeves mentioned my goodness uh you know we have three starts of baker mayfield he leads the team in uh catches in baker mayfield's first start leads the team in targets in baker mayfield's second start leads the team in catches in and uh, uh targets in the third start now facing uh this just atrocious buccaneers defense which is which has just been getting lit up by uh, 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 tight ends. So, I mean, he is in a prime, prime blow up spot. I thought you were going to say somebody else too. I thought we were going to have like the return of Brashad Perryman conversation coming back. You see, they signed him. Hang on. Yeah, the Browns signed Brashad Perryman. That's good. <laughs> we, have, we haven't been disappointed by that guy in a while. So, <laughs> look at Reeves. He's just like, really? This dude's back in our life? Yeah, he didn't suit up last week, but. You just wait. It's going to happen, man. You know, it's going to be like fantasy football playoff season. Somebody's going to need a wide receiver and they're going to be like, well, I got my Super Bowl. Let's start Rashad Perry. That's going to be depressing and nobody's going to like doing it. Um, Evan, I wanted to ask you too about these Cleveland running backs because this whole situation is kind of a mess because Carlos Hyde, you know, he's cheap. Duke Johnson, he's good. Doesn't get looked. Speaking of good, Nick Chubb looks like a different difference maker when he's out there. He's just never out there. So what are the Browns doing with this running back situation, Evan? I mean, you know, despite the fact that Duke Johnson and Nick Chubb have severely outplayed Carlos Hyde recently, you know, the 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 pendulum has not really moved a whole lot. Uh, it has started to move a little bit uh, because Duke Johnson has outsnapped Carlos Hyde in back-to-back games. Uh, the last one, you know, you can chalk up to uh, the Browns were playing from behind against the Chargers. But guess what? Duke Johnson outsnapped him the week before. And that was like a very even, you know, low scoring game against the Ravens that went to overtime. So, but, you know, they don't like call plays to get Duke Johnson the ball, you you know, like they don't. And it's, you know, it's, it's, it's maddening because Duke Johnson is really friggin' good, first of all. And second of all, um, they are facing this Tampa Bay team that's just getting killed every week on wheel routes um in week four before the bye against the bears i mean two of those touchdowns by the bears came on wheel routes they and they had ripped another big play on a wheel route last week tevin coleman's touchdown came on a wheel route um you know that's the way to attack this bucks defense it's just a vanilla zone like they don't do anything special you know it's just and you can like confuse them and they're filled with young players that you know super inexperienced so and Duke Johnson would be the guy to be on, be a recipient of uh, wheel routes, but he still has not had over six touches in any game so far this year. You know, his snaps are up, but like they don't proactively try to manufacture touches for him. And I mean, they just, they're just so lacking in creativity. It's unbelievable. 
Yeah, but didn't you hear Hugh said what Hugh said? He said he's, you know, they're learning to run the ball. Oh, okay. <laughs> Reeves, how are you handling this Browns running back situation? Because, I mean, I get it with Duke this week. He's only 4K. Like, could you pair him with Baker in a really low-owned stack? Yeah, absolutely. It's just really hard to click that button. Yeah, I mean, it would just be to for grins of making a lineup for a game that's probably going to go over. Every Bucks game has gone over, by the way. They're the only team in the NFL that the over has gone over in every game. Um, yeah, it's just tough. I mean, Carlos Hyde, I've been, he's gone over four yards for carrying his one game so far this year. Uh, just kind of they're just jamming him with touches still it's it's crazy you know I've kind of been the designated Roto World Browns watcher and Nick Chubb came in last week I didn't even really know like what I was like watching a different game where he had like a four he came in had like a 40 yard run where he lost about 15 of it on a hold uh, that was Damian Ratley too because Damian Ratley made a bunch of mistakes too even though he led the team in, in receiving yardage but he's he's like running like four times the speed it's like he ate the mushroom, man, and just turned big. And like, you know, you know Carlos Hyde just he's just such a such a slog out there. But like I've been talking about no Gerald McCoy. They're gonna jam Carlos Hyde with a bunch of touches still. The Browns are probably gonna score points. No one gives it more offensive touchdowns per game than the Buccaneers. So if they're in scoring position, who's still gonna get the ball? It's still gonna be Carlos Hyde. I mean, so you can hold your nose and make some game stacks with Carlos Hyde uh, still and in that situation because the points are gonna be there in this game. Yeah, it's just weird because, like, I want to play Baker, but it just – and, you know, Reeves, correct me if I'm wrong because I know you watch a lot of Browns game, which is – God, that's a depressing sentence to say. But they're just not airing it out in the red zone all that much, are they? Oh, uh, well, they don't. They, they The thing is they don't really get to the red zone. So the Browns lead the league. <laughs> so the Browns lead the league in possessions that have started in the opponent's side of the field. They lead the league. They've got 15 of them. Guess how many touchdowns they've scored in those drives? Uh, Three. Yep, three three on the button. Scored three three oh, times. Man. Oh, oh my goodness. This three like, touchdowns. It's like the week that you won the Millie. You just got take, everything right. Take that. Light it up. Tomlinson. Take that. It's, Kobe it's unreal, man. They're, they're an aptitude. I mean, they Jabril Peppers had two punt returns in the beginning of that game when that game was close. That he ran deep into the deep in Chargers territory. They couldn't get a freaking first down. And they punt. It's just a joke, man. It's it's the, the way that their drives just fizzle out. But like I said, they did play, like I said, I think benefit of the doubt, though, we know the Ravens have been a good defense, and the Chargers have been swinging back in, at the pendulum towards being a good defense again. I was super excited because I got to bet the Chargers twice last week. I bet them once laying one, and then Sunday morning they were underdog, and I just jammed the money line. So that was the one positive that hit last week. <laughs> You know, I'll tell you what, we spent all this time talking about the Browns, and they're not favored in this game. You get a Bucks team, quarterback by Jameis Winston, who went off at a really cheap price tag. It was going to be really hard to play to win if you didn't play him unless you played Brock Osweiler, of course. And, you know, Winston at home against the Browns defense that is vulnerable in a number of places. Evan, how are you how are you approaching this Tampa Bay team to this week? I really just, you know, would, would any of the listeners be bothered if we just dedicated the rest of the show uh, <laughs> to, like, how to fix the Browns? I don't think so, but, you know, we kind of do our own thing here. Hell, last week I walked off. Like, you know, what are you going to do? <laughs> um, yeah, I, you know, Jameis Winston, I think, is a matchup-proof guy at this point. Um, but, you know, the, this Browns defense has been legitimately really good uh, against the pass. So, I mean, the, the matchup is, is a concern. Um, and the fact that I think that the Buccaneers are going to have some rushing success against the Browns, you know, they came off the bye. I think that a lot of people, myself included, had expectations that Ronald Jones would be more involved. But Peyton Barber really dominated it. I mean, 62% of the snaps, that's his most since week two, 17 touches. Ronald Jones only had four. Um, The Browns have not defended the run well this year. 4.7 yards per carry allowed to opposing running backs. Seven rushing touchdowns allowed to opposing running backs in six games. Um, You know, Peyton Barber is still really cheap on daily fantasy sites. uh, And he's he's a a home favorite, role secure lead back in a good matchup. Uh, So that's pretty intriguing. Uh, And I think that it takes a little bit of wind out of the sails of uh, Jameis Winston, but you know, not, not too much. I mean, I think that, you know, I'm still going to be building lineups with, with Jameis Winston this week. I would like to get your guys take on the receiver core last week. Chris Godwin, of course, runs the fourth fewest routes in the wide wide out core behind Mike Evans, behind Adam Humphreys, 
behind uh, DJX. And of course, he has the best fantasy game, you know, and then OJ Howard plays on, you know, his peg leg. And uh, he has a monster fan or a really good fantasy game for a tight end as well. You know, uh, Cameron Brake teases us early with the 15 yard touchdown beating Devondre Campbell doesn't even get a target the rest of the game. This pass catcher core, man, uh, to me is really difficult to sort out. Yeah. I mean, you got a dartboard because that could mm-hmm. help. You got a dartboard, just figure out where you go. You know, it's like, it's really tough. I'm still going to be keep playing OJ Howard. I loaded up on him last week. It worked out um, a lot more than the Baker Mayfield teams did. Uh, Reeves, how are you attacking just this kind of Tampa Bay team? Because the pass catchers, you know, Jameis loves those tight ends. They're both still really, really cheap on DFS sites. Like, how are you attacking this Bucks team? Yeah, I mean, I think Evan answered the question. You just play Jameis, uh, yes. you know, you cover it. But, uh, yeah, I like – so I do like Howard the most too. And that, in that game, the Browns uh, lost middle linebacker Joe Schobert, left the game with a hamstring injury. He had played every snap of the season so far from that point. His backup, James Burgess, just got put pick. on IR. Dashi pick. Just got placed on IR, too, his backup. So I don't think he's going to play. So O.J. Howard's in a good spot. He's been a top seven scorer in each of his past three full games. So I like I like him. Um, and you talk about the tight ends, man. Jameis says it's this is like long going. Like he came in the league. Brate was old. Was Brate even drafted? Was he a seventh round or undrafted? I think he was undrafted out of Harvard. Yeah, Ungar, un, undrafted out of Harvard makes this dude makes this dude millions. Gets a gets a gets a contract this year. Uh, his his senior season in college or his last year in college, he made Nick O'Leary up for the the tight end award. Nick O'Leary, I've, he's a platypus. He's like a platypus <laughs> playing football. Like this dude has like twenty nine inch arms. He runs like sundial 40. He scored, he scored a touchdown last week with the Dolphins. Uh, but this dude's like, he was a platypus playing football. And like, Jame, Jameis had this dude up for like the tight end of the nation. Up at no, Florida no, no. Like, he won. That he won end. the award? <laughs> That's, yeah. yeah, see? I, I what's, I what's that I award mean, again? What's that award again? The tight end award? The Kobe uh, I can't Cleaner remember. Memorial, the Kobe Cleaner Award. And it's definitely what it is. You know? I don't remember the name of it. It's, By the way, for I those was thinking you, of it today. I was thinking of it today. I was like, what is that damn tight end award? There are people out there who are going to listen to this as a podcast and not going to get to see Evan, like, showing out just like, a couple of very small arms. When As soon yeah, as like, man. he brings up Nick O'Leary, the arm just go off, and he's just kind of doing this little, like, T-Rex arm motion. Because he's got right. the, the really short arms. <laughs> yeah, like, no, I understand why. Arm. And if you if you watch him, like when he like uh, loses a fumble, like you can't get it back. Like oh, <laughs> you can't get it back. You know, uh, it's called the John Mackey Award, and Jameis Winston won the John Mackey Award for Nick O'Leary at Florida State. I swear to God, when you said that, John he Mac- has the trophy. Jameis has the trophy. Yeah, I really thought that, for a second I thought there was an award for short arms. I'm like, wow, they have an award for like the guy with the shortest arms in college football. But no, that's the tight end award. My apologies, but yeah. I like the Titans this week. <laughs> we kind of went off on a tangent there. I love yeah. it. You know? I would mention, too, in that game that the Browns actually used Denzel Ward to shadow in that game for the first time. I don't know if it was just – I don't know if they can do that here with the with the, the depth the Bucks have, but they had him follow Keenan Allen around on uh, that game. And Keenan got him early, two two catches on the first drive uh, right he, off the bat. He followed um, John Brown the week before. Uh, yeah. yeah, he's he's balling, dude. Yeah, Denzel he's, Ward's Denzel balling. Been, he's really good. So who would he that, follow? What do you, what do you follow? That's right. Yeah, Mike that's Evans? what I'm saying. Would he follow D Jax? I mean, he's 183 pounds. Mike Evans is 231. I mean, if I don't even know. It's, yeah, it's, I don't know. We probably just should not concern ourselves because yeah, it's, yeah. it's not projectable. Yeah, but if no, we no, figure no. Out the answer. Yeah. If we figure out the answer, then like it creates a huge edge on the other side of the field. Like if if he shadows D Jax, all of a sudden Mike Evans is a great play. If he shadows Evans, well. Jameis will throw it high because he – Well, Evans is clearly the guy that's going to play the most snaps. Yeah. So we know that. I mean, he ran double the amount of routes than DJX and, and Godwin ran last week. So, I mean, he's going to play the most. They've got to get Adam Humphreys this exercise. I mean, Adam Humphreys has got to get out here running around. Um, because what he played – he ran like 43 routes and had three targets. Like, whatever. He, he, won, won, the Chris, he won the Chris Hogan Memorial Award. Yeah. I mean, and, he, and he led the team in receiving yards. <laughs> what is life what is yeah, life it, it's just know. dfs gets really weird sometimes all right matters. Yeah. <laughs> well after half an hour we're gonna move on to our next game we got to- oh wait man we got a real quick hit brown's d up okay let's hit them up go ahead they're super cheap on both sites they lead the nfl in turnovers they're playing a team that leads the league in turnover rate per drive 
Uh, you always talk about how it doesn't matter, like when you want to play DFS defense is about points allowed. Yeah. The Browns can give up points here at their price and still get you like six to eight points probably pretty well. And the Bucks have allowed two teams in the past three weeks to have 14 and 17 points in DFS slates. The Browns are like the fourth from the bottom ranked defense on both sites. Uh, there's, there's, there's some cheap points to have there. Yeah, I don't have, I mean, you guys know how I am, man. If there's a cheap defense out there, I prefer them be at home. But if like there's a cheap defense out there that I think can get a few turnovers, a pick six, and we know that the Tampa's going to throw it a lot, especially with Peyton Barber and Ronald Jones being the running backs. I don't hate rolling the dice there. All right, let's move on to the Patriots at the Bears, 49 and a half point total. The Patriots, three and a half point favorites on the road. And Evan, I'll tell you what, it's a little bit weird seeing the Patriots, A, in a game with a total less than 50, and B, is only three and a half point favorites against the Bears. What are we doing with the Pats this week? Because I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to keep playing Sony Michelle just because he keeps getting so much work for the Patriots and he's only 5.5K. Like, I, I just struggle finding a way not to play Sony Michelle at that price. Yeah, this is a really, really interesting game, man, because the, the total was high. I think it started to move down a little bit, uh, but it's still pretty high. And the bears are in the rare position of like last week was just crazy in the United States in terms of the weather. I mean, we had a 20 degree game in Denver. We had, I mean, I know where I live in Chicago is like, it was cold, like maybe forties yeah. in Miami it was a hundred freaking degrees. <laughs> and you know, the bears went down there and played an overtime game and they played 79 snaps. Yeah. Uh, it was only a yeah, hundred. It was only a hundred degrees down there because Brock Osweiler was, was spitting fire. Okay. Okay. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> and they, uh, I mean, they, in their first four games, the bears average, the bears defense averaged 59 snaps played. And so they played 20 more snaps than usual in this crazy ass, like a hundred degree weather in Miami in the middle of October somehow. Uh, and they also lost Khalil Mack, who did not practice today. Uh, Danny Trevathan, their best inside linebacker, left at one point. I, I didn't check his practice status uh, today, but I will uh, within the next two days. Um, so I, I don't know. I mean, and they got shredded by Brock Osweiler. So how do we view them? I mean, I think that going into last week, I considered them the best defense in football. Now that looks stupid. I think the Ravens clearly are, but you know, I, I you know, I, I it's it's going to be it, it's a really difficult like matchup to break down. Uh, when the Patriots have been in situations where uh, they are facing a really good run defense and a really good pass rush, what they end up doing historically is they throw the ball like 50 times you know and it's just quick short passes and that would benefit to mitigate the impact of the pass rush to avoid that stout front uh, and that would benefit James White uh, who kind of had a slow game uh, last week it would benefit Julian Edelman the Bears have been getting uh, giving up a lot of production uh, to slot receivers this year. A tight end has scored a touchdown against the Bears in four straight games. That kind of bodes well uh, for Rob Gronkowski. Really for Gronk, what you want to see is Khalil Mack maybe not play because then he doesn't end up chip blocking the entire damn game like he did uh, last week. Um, but that's that's kind of my view on the Patriots side right now. I still really, really have a lot of respect for the Bears defense though. And I think that they could snap back but I think that there are some reasons to think that they might not bounce back immediately from from getting shredded by freaking Brock Osweiler last week I'm just gonna say you mentioned James White and I like him a lot he's 6.9k on DraftKings like that is a lot to pay for a guy who's not even the lead runner as the Evan you're shaking your head no you don't think he's, it's... he's not usable on DraftKings yeah I mean that's that price is just like I can't play him at that price Reeves what do you think about the Patriots this week uh, yeah, I kind of like Evan. I've, I've kind of mixed thoughts, especially on the Bears. You know, I was kind of, especially their run defense, I was always hesitant in weekly when I was writing up the Bears because uh, their run defense has been had been so good all year. But you see they opened with Green Bay, then they played Seattle, then they played Arizona, then they played Tampa Bay before the bye. So I was always kind of hesitant, like, is this run D as good? And they came out and gave up 100 yards to Frank Gore. He was the first guy 35 years old to rush for 100 yards since Emmett Smith. <laughs> uh, you know, maybe that had to do some with the weather or not, but I mean, I, I was still hesitant to see like this, this, this bears defense. I, I think they, the pieces are good. And Vic Fangio, I have a lot of respect for, um, cause they were an all right defense last year when they didn't have as, as good as pieces. 
but their schedule before the bye was kind of it was just really lacking, you know. And they played just a half of Aaron Rodgers that first game. So I, I, I'm this is a kind of a litmus test here. Uh, if you do want to bet the Patriots, you got to get now. It's already moved up a half point. So I mean, you, you got if you want the best of the number, you better get an ASAP because it's going to be probably three and a half or four by the time the Sunday gets around. You mentioned Sony. We were waiting like the first like three or four games. They had run like two plays inside the ten yard line. I think through two through three games. And this is a team that had led the league in almost goal line rushing attempts. They were like first top five basically for the last seven years. Uh, you know, that's what led us to the Garrett season. That's what led us to like Burkhead blowing up last year. And we're starting to see it. Since Sony Michelle has been activated now, he's second in the league in red zone carries. He's fifth in carries from inside the 10-yard line. He's tied for fourth for carries inside the five-yard line. We're starting to see those rushing touchdowns start to pile for the Patriots like we knew that they were going to eventually. And it's even better now because, you know, I'll never wish ill on, on Rex, Rex Burkhead getting injured, but what he did was create just a two-man backfield, which makes it a lot easier to navigate for us for fantasy purposes. And Michelle's been awesome. You talked about his price, uh, you know, over on DK. And, yeah, I think that you you just keep plugging him in. Uh, I wish they did throw to him a little more. They wish he had a little more of that Deion Lewis-esque role to him. Uh, because he's good in space too. You know, they haven't really created, him, you know, getting him in space. He's been used more of like a sledgehammer, um, but he's really good. It seemed like the electric game from Sony Michelle. He has the bit, he has some real sizzle to his game if he can get it going. So yeah, I'm with that. Uh, the other side, I think is a lot more interesting here. Wait, 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 you're just not going to talk about your exercise buddy? No, man, he's off. <laughs> Are we talking about Gordon? No, you want to talk about what Gordon? Listen, man, we almost had the Gordon party. I we mean, have to uh, talk about Gordon. We have yeah. to he played eight, 81% of the snaps. Um, after playing 22.2 and 26.1 the previous two games, he led the team at 26% of the targets, 28% of their air yards. Uh, if he's going to get that kind of usage per week now going forward, he's just a dude you play like for the upside, like he's especially until he gets priced because he's a dude that can get up to you know seven, 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 eight K on FanDuel pretty easily, and he's a dude that can get up to the high sixes on DraftKings pretty easily. Um, if he starts popping some games off. Uh, like, we know that this offense is capable of putting up. I mean, Hogan's going to be, like, the fifth guy now. He's, like, the fifth wheel in the offense. Like, yep. he's going to be doing a lot more exercising, you know, per week. Uh, that's really it, man. Like, we, we, we can't give Hogan any love. He came through, man. He got that third and one, you know, last week. He made the, he made the plays. Caught all four of his targets. Did what he was supposed to do. I want to talk about the Bears, though, man. All right, talk about, the, talk Bears. about the Bears. So do yeah, I. Go, go for it. Is it what, by the way, this Bears running game, I'm just done with it. No way, man. I want to play Tariq Cohen a lot, man. I don't play. Oh, yeah. uh, maybe Jordan Howard's the one I'm done with. Dude, Cohen, they finally figured out, like, how to use Cohen, like, the last two games. And the we the Patriots linebackers are terrible in space. Like, they're completely atrocious. This is the mismatch. The, Cohen's the dude, man. Cohen's the dude in this offense this week. I mean, we saw what Kareem Hunt's done twice to, to Deontay, High, Deontay Hightower. Uh, this, Cohen is, has been just mashing the past two weeks. Uh, New England just allowed five for 105 for Kareem Hunt. They allowed Naheem Hines to catch seven catches, which was mostly garbage time. But that's where you want to attack this defense. His role is has just totally overtaken Jordan Howard. Jordan Howard's snaps per game have gone like this. Three Cohen snaps per game have gone like this. Um, it, even You have the benefit of if the Patriots pull away, he's the guy that's going to play a lot more snaps. He should be involved in the game plan, like I said, because it should, be, the, it should revolve around him. Uh, and he's just so much more electric. You see when he came in the game, he's another speed than so many players in the league. Uh, they finally figured out how to use him. I mean, he's 5-1 on DK. Like, you can get a lot of squeeze out of that. He has he had over 30 points in week four on DK, and then he had 24 last week. All right, you talked me into it. You talked me into Tariq Cohen, as long as you didn't try and talk me into Jordan Howard, because, Evan, I'm, I'm done with Jordan Howard. Like, I'm not playing him again. He's dead to me. Yeah, I mean, that's fine. I think that that's really fair. You know, the, the Patriots even, you know, the Patriots have even been bad in run defense so far, and I really don't want a whole lot to do uh, with Jordan Howard. They both lost fumbles last week. Uh, Jordan Howard's occurred at the goal line. Uh, Terry Cohen lost a fumble later on. Um, but as Reeves kind of mentioned, you know, and it's not only – one of the reasons that I had optimism about Jordan Howard entering the season – uh, was that it looked like they were going to use him more in the passing game. And they really did try uh, early on. <laughs> but, but not only are his snaps on the way down, but his, his routes run are like swiftly on the way down. Uh, and that's really going to uh, lower his floor, lower his ceiling and everything. So he's going to just be a, a totally touchdown reliant guy uh, going forward. Mitchell Trubisky. Ooh. 
has been a top the five. Biscuit. The biscuit. The, 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 the truth biscuit has <laughs> been a top five fantasy quarterback in back to back games. Um, I think that, you know, having watched the games, uh, well, the, the, the first one was just clean because they were facing the Mike Smith defense. And, um, I mean, there was no pressure, you know, it was just, it was just playing T-ball, uh, in the first one last week, I thought it was, you know, not as pretty, but, um, man, I mean, he has like a really good fantasy friendly skill set because he can run number one. You know, he's got that Konami code as um, that term that uh, Reeves has coined. Uh, he is uh, fifth or top five among quarterbacks in rushing yards, even while having uh, an early season buy. Uh, that raises his floor and his ceiling. Uh, and the Patriots do not bring pre- pressure. I mean, they are last in the NFL in sacks. They're 25th in quarterback hit rate. Um, there's a lot of talent around Mitchell Trubisky and, you know, he is learning a new offense and he's entering his, what, sixth start in this offense. He's got Tarek Cohen. He's got Allen Robinson. He's got, you know, Taylor Gabriel is balling by the way. Uh, he's got, you know, Trey Burton on, on these, uh, gimme shovel passes for touchdowns. You know, they love to run that play, man. They love to run the shovel pass. That is a, an, Andy Reid staple uh, and that of course uh, is the coaching tree where Matt Nagy comes from um, but there's like legit a lot of talent around him and they're they're facing one of the worst defenses in the NFL um, at home so it, is Mitchell Trubisky a cash game play this week oh, I, I mean we know Reeves is going to say no because we know who Reeves wants to play <laughs> no, but I think he's, I mean, he's in play. He's in that bucket of guys and he's in the pricing tier where I want to shop at, you know, the Evan brought the big point. We brought it up last week, but the Patriots just don't get pressure on the quarterback. I mean, they're the, they're the worst team in the league at pressure on the quarterback and sacking the quarterback. Mitchell Trubisky is ninth in the NFL in quarterback rating with a clean pocket. He's 17th under pressure. So, I mean, that's a big time dynamic. He hit on the rushing. He's rushed for 53 and 47 yards the past two weeks. He's averaging four and a half rushing points now per game. That's fourth of all quarterbacks in the league. I mean, those are all things that you're speaking my language and a lot of those things. I mean, I was high. I was high on Jabrisky coming into the season. He was like one of my favorite two QB guys. I got a ton of them in best ball. Um, I, I really loved his situation. And, you know, he started off slow, didn't play well. Or, you know, it could be some of its defensive induced or just him getting acclimated, you know, to what, what his surroundings are. And I think them, them getting involved, some of these speed players that weren't involved earlier in the season, they were less a slower-paced team, you know, earlier in the season. They were great. They're over how great they looked their opening drives the first couple of weeks. You'd watch me like, man, this offense looks so great. And then they were just, like, terrible the rest of the nights. Um, they played those two primetime games to open. Um, and then they start getting Cohen involved. They start getting Taylor Gabriel involved. And this offense starts to look a lot different. You know, they started using some of those playmakers they brought in instead of just jamming Jordan Howard in and dumping the ball down to Jordan Howard. This offense took some new life. So, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm on board with Trubisky. Yeah, but go ahead, Evan. He was uh, one of my highest zone quarterbacks in best ball, too. I mean, I was just smashing him every time, like, you know, 16th round. I mean, he was there like so cheaply and there were a lot of bad quarterbacks, you know, down there that you really didn't want like Tannehill and uh, well, Dalton was a sweet pick there. Um, Alex Smith has been he's not terrible, but definitely not really good. Um, you know, but, but Trubisky was a guy that I was slamming to uh, in, in, in that, uh, in, in best ball. So I, I hope selfishly for my best ball team that he can keep it up. But he's been, I mean, a top five fantasy quarterback in back-to-back games. And now he, he gets at home one of the best matchups possible. All right, let's move on to our next game. And it's the Rams at San Francisco. Total of 52, the Rams nine and a half point favorites. And uh, here, let me let me just break down the Rams side really quick. Play Todd Gurley. How'd I do, how'd I do Reeves? you good. I mean, there's more players to play, but you definitely just want to keep – like, Todd Gurley is in, like, the – I don't play NBA DFS, but he's in the Russell Westbrook zone from a couple years ago. Mm-hmm. Remember, like, when Russell was just triple-doubling oh, yeah. every night oh, and, like, yeah. his price just kept climbing, but it didn't matter. Like, if you were playing, you just had to play him. Mm-hmm. That's, like, where we are. Like, you just have to play Todd Gurley. Any, no matter the cost, you just you just start your team. You go in, you, you click Todd Gurley's name, and you build the rest of the team around that because there's not a player – that's in a more fantasy con- conducive system than him. They lead the league in running, you know, they run every play out of three wide receiver sets out of 11 personnel. He's like number one in the league in running against light boxes because they have a run pass option every play. 
Uh, they he gets the most carries inside inside the red zone, inside the ten, inside the five, near the paint than any other running back. He's used in the passing game. He's, everything you want is he's getting in spades, and he's on the highest. He's on one of the highest scoring offenses in the NFL. Like it's just really simple. You start there, you click the button, and you move on. Yeah, and you know, with uh, with Gurley, obviously, he's going to get a ton of usage. With the Rams, though, Cooper Cup, he's out, and he was one of the guys getting a lot of red zone looks. And Evans, Evan, now we're looking at Brandon Cooks, Robert Woods, John Reynolds, maybe. What do we do with this Rams passing attack? Josh Reynolds, man. Josh Reynolds. What did I say? <laughs> John Reynolds. Yeah, I don't know who that is. That's a fullback somewhere, probably. <laughs> um yeah reynolds. i mean go reynolds i i, I like jo, uh, jo, john jo, <laughs> got him i like josh reynolds um <laughs> I, the, I thought the best comparison for him coming out of texas a&m was the old bengals receiver chris henry really long dude uh long strider you know um a guy that he didn't necessarily have like great time speed i think that he was at like four five flat or four five two uh, but he, I mean, he could move because he, you know, like just every step that he takes, he like eats up ground. Um, I think we're going to see Robert Woods in the slot and Brandon Cooks plays most of his snaps on the left side. Okay. Uh, and we're facing the 49ers now. I thought that Richard Sherman was going to be washed entering the year. Richard Sherman has always been a stationary left cornerback that will never change. Um, teams are not throwing at him. Whether or not he's washed does not matter because teams are not throwing at him. That matters. You know, it, it's similar. I, you remember uh, Namdi Asamoa? Yeah. Uh, for like the, the Raiders and the Eagles. Well, even toward the end of his Raiders career, like it didn't matter if he was washed because teams just were not throwing at him. Teams would just throw at the other dude. And um, that's what teams are doing against the 49ers. You know, they're throwing at Greg Mabin or Akello Witherspoon or, you know, K1 Williams. And, you know, that's like where I, I want to look. So I want to look at Brandon Cooks and especially Robert Woods in the slot, man. I mean, that's, this is, he's like, I think he's like almost a lock button play, you know? And I mean, it, it obviously is relative to price, you know, it, um, but my goodness, he is in a great, great, great spot here. And I think that Josh Reynolds is still a good play, especially because he's so cheap. Um, but he, I think that he's going to end up with the toughest matchup in the Rams receiver core. Okay, then I'm just going to have to go and play John Reynolds instead of Josh Reynolds. Have a tough <laughs> Can't play him then. Uh, on the San Francisco side, we got C.J. Beathard. Had a nice game last week, but the old the old beat hard getting it done over there. He's only 4.8K over on DraftKings this week, Reeves. Talk to me about your boy, CJ. Yeah, man. Listen, man, 4.8K is just ludicrous. So we look at look at CJ Beathard in his starts. In his career starts in the NFL, he's averaged 21.1 rushing yards, 259.9 passing yards, 18.6 DraftKings points. He's 4.8K. He had 18.9 points last week. The week before, he had 27.7. The week before that, he had 19.8. What, what's the story? Why, like, why is this dude 4.8? Like, it makes no sense. You go back to last year, um, he the game he got benched, and finally they put Garoppolo in was his only his only like real terrible game of fantasy. The week before that, he had 26.1 DK points. The week before that, 18.4. His first start, he had 16.4. The dude is good. Like for for fantasy, like he's what you want. He's kind of like in that Ryan Fitzpatrick like hair on fire mode. Like he's going to turn it over twice. He's going to run around, make plays with his leg. Like they're probably going to lose. This is a game. This game's definitely going over by the way, too. Uh, it's 52. Like you look at the Rams games, the Rams are probably going to approach 40 themselves. Uh, this game's definitely going over. Yeah. Uh, and, then, and the Rams have been bad, like straight up bad on def defensively. Uh, they allowed 322 yards to Case Keenum the week before. The, the last week, the week before that, they got completely bludgeoned in the run game by Seattle and gave up three passing touchdowns to Russell Wilson on 13 completions. The week before that, Kirk Cousins threw for 422 yards on Thursday night. Phillip Rivers got him for 17 points, uh, DK points the week before that. It's, I mean, I, it's, the price makes no sense to me. 4.8K, like you can play this dude in cash like pretty easily and probably come away with 20 points um i mean it's it's really wild to me that he's four he's 4.8 on dk i i'm more attracted there but he's six four on FanDuel too uh i think you could totally play i think he's totally viable uh he's got weapons the 49ers backfield 
the hodgepodge backfield has been lighting it up. Like, I, I mean, it's, it hasn't been noticeable because one guy isn't doing it. They are second in the NFL in yards from scrimmage for backfield. They trail only the Chargers in yardage per game. They have been blowing teams up in the run game. Uh, all their guys are functional kind of in the passing game. Like, they don't have, like, one guy that's, like, a, a script-conducive play. Uh, they've kind of just been, like, willing to dump it down to whoever's in the game, uh, even, including Kyle Jusic. Um, but they are producing tons of yardage in that backfield. And the guy like Breed is the obvious play. He's at double digit PPR points in five of his six games. Uh, he even got there in the game. He left with an injury. Uh, the thing is he's not fully healthy still. And, you know, he's getting, you know, they, they still played Raheem Mostert whose career like high was like 11 rushing yards in a game before last week. And he comes in and runs for 87 yards. Uh, but that just shows you it's it, this offensive line, this system, uh is is in full effect and i don't know if anyone's really noticing because the one guy isn't like really stepped up and providing fantasy points but the 49ers backfield has been giving tons of production so far to start the season yeah and you know this is what cj bethard's known for he's known to dump it off to the running backs matt burita uh, yeah he was still a bit, little bit banged up but i mean he's only 5.3k evan i actually really like the combination of bethard and burita and then you want to throw in marquis goodwin only 4.6k caught a bomb yesterday i didn't know bethard could throw deep like that Oh, he's got a gun, man. I had no idea. I tell you, he's checked out. Uh, he had uh, at the combine, he had the second highest velocity uh, at the combine uh, at the 2017 combine. And he's also super athletic, yo. He has eight career starts. He has four rushing touchdowns. That's a 50% probability, right? Wait, hold on. I got it. Let me wait, get my. Hang on. Hang on. Oh, wait. Got we want uh, crap. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah. No, he's, I think he ran like four, six coming out of Iowa. Um, you know, where he, uh, as Levitan says, he, he showered with uh, George Kittle, you know? So um, he, I, I, I like CJ Beathard. I mean, he has taken a second year step forward. Kyle Shanahan loved this dude coming out of college, yeah. you know, and Kyle Shanahan is not necessarily, you know, a great talent evaluator. I remember his dad, one of the reasons that his dad um, kind of, petered out although i have great respect for his dad one of the offensive masterminds of an nfl war like i am not trying to you know diminish his dad but uh that was one of the reasons that his dad never maybe maximized his upside was because uh was not great uh in the personnel uh side and it's possible that, that kyle ends up being like his dad you know to some extent i think we all become our fathers to to some extent um, but I think that, um, man, they are scheming great offense. Like they, so what they did, uh, at least leading into uh, Monday night's game was they made it really a point to, uh, for CJ Beathard to get the ball out of his hands quickly. He had the fastest time to attempt in the NFL uh, during his two starts because you know, CJ Beathard, they know his weaknesses. Like they, they know that he does not have the greatest pocket awareness and um, he takes like just crazy ass hits in the pocket. Um, but, you know, they made sure to get the ball out of his hands quickly and he's been super, super productive. I mean, and I, I agree with Reeves. Reeves. All right. So CJ Beathard at 6,400 on FanDuel or Blake Bortles at home against the Texans at 6,500. Oh, let's auto smash CJ Beathard, man. Okay. <laughs> oh, not Blake Bortles week. Not again. I can my heart can't handle that, man. Like let's let's not do that. I'll tell you what, let's talk about some other quarterbacks though, because we got to get moving along. We're, we're running over on this show. The Browns talk, man. Wasn't messing around. Other quarterbacks you like this week, Reeves. Who you got? Reeves, you're on mute, buddy. I froze you out for a second there, my oh, man. Right. Hey, yeah, I can't blame you. All right, other quarterbacks you got this week. Who do you like? Um, we kind of talked about like all the guys like I'm really circling. I I mean a couple guys I just want to bring up for the sake of uh maybe this is just the all Konami show, uh, because I want to bring up Cam Newton because the Eagles have only faced one mobile quarterback and Mariota ran 10 times for 46 yards and a touchdown. The last time Cam Newton played the Eagles, he ran all over them a year ago. He ran for 71 yards and a touchdown. Uh I'm interested in him. And I want to bring up just a, for a conversation piece. Um, just what happened to Deshaun Watson last week and to where he is this week. So Deshaun Watson is priced at 5,500 on DraftKings. It's the cheapest by far he's been all season. He, after he played that Sunday night game where he 
channeled his inner Robert Griffin and tried to run over every dude that he played defensively. He came back last week, was on the injury report all week with a chest injury. He ran one time. He ran one time for three yards, and his other rushing attempt was a kneel down that he was credited with. And, like, this is a defense you need your legs against because they. we just saw – a lot like Dak Prescott still had the same Dak Prescott passing game he had last week that he's had for 18 games in a row. The dude just ran for 82 yards and a touchdown earlier in the season. Marcus Mariota ran for 51 yards against this Jaguar defense. Uh, if you go back to last year, they got absolutely crushed on the ground by quarterbacks uh, in the rushing game. Mm -hmm. Mariota ran for 50, 50 yards and 24 yards against them. Jacoby Brissett ran for 36 and 31. Russell Wilson ran for 50 yards against them. Tyrod Taylor ran for 30 yards against them. Like they're, they, the way they play defense, you can, you can stack rushing points. I mean, I'm not telling anyone to chase points against the Jaguars, but if he is going to run around for his price, like he has a dude that has like a 30 to 35 point game, like in his range of outcomes. Yeah, he's just not going to have it for my team. I, I I just can't do it. There are so many other better – like quarterback plays that I feel more comfortable with. Evan, who else do you like at quarterback? Uh, I actually like that uh, Jaguars-Texans game to shoot out. Really? Yeah, yeah, I, I do. Um, I think that, like, neither team is going to be able to run the ball on the other team, and um, it's going to put a lot of onus on the quarterbacks. Uh, we've already seen a downward movement on the total. Uh, I think that that's, I think that's dumb. Uh, and I, I like uh, Bortles and uh, Deshaun Watson actually uh, in that game, but uh, Carson Wentz at home against Carolina, Carolina mm -hmm. has not played well uh, in terms of pass defense has not rushed the passer well. Uh, and I like Carson Wentz. He's been uh, on an upward trajectory. Andrew Luck, I think is in play every single friggin' week, man, because dude is throwing the ball 50 plus times a game and you know volume is not necessarily the number one thing that we look for in quarterback play but when we get it in uh the you know at the range that Andrew Luck is giving it to us it's a little different uh and uh he may get T.Y. Hilton back this week of course Andy Dalton uh on the road against uh the, the Chiefs and Joe Flacco man ah this is gross Ooh. I know don't leave the show Ooh. Crane Ooh. Ooh. Don't leave the show. Oh, why? He's catching, we were having such a good show. He's catching a really bad Saints defense on the road at home, uh, and I just wanted to mention him. It is weird to see Baltimore favored over the Saints. Like, I understand why yeah. they got a great defense, and Saints defense is bad. But it just seems weird to see. By the way, I'm going to mention one other spot. If you want to pay up to be contrarian, Kirk Cousins to Adam Thielen is an interesting stack this week. Yep. I don't think anybody's going to have. All right, running backs that we have not talked about. Reeves, go. Who you got? I mean, we kind of, I mean, the, the main guys to play, if you want it, because like you talked about that Thursday through Monday slate. I mean, Joe Mixon's in a smash spot. We saw, we talked about that Chiefs defense. Like if the team was going to be able to run for four quarters on them, what was going to happen? And it did, uh, you know, the Chiefs are allowing 193.2 total yards per game to running backs. They're allowing 36 PPR points per game to opposing backfields. You have a guy, Joe Mixon, who doesn't share touches with anyone. You know, they're not getting Mark Walton involved. So like, he's a guy that's just going to get a bunch of touches uh, in his backfield against a team that's just been horrible against the position. Easy play. We talk about Saquon. He's joined Kareem Hunt now as the only two players that have 100 yards of scrimmage in each of their first six games. Opposing teams are targeting running backs. 27.7% of the time uh, against the Falcons. That leads the league by a lot. Only James Connors run more pass routes than Saquon Barkley. It's pretty easy auto play for Saquon Barkley this week. The Falcons have allowed over 20 PPR points to every lead running back that I faced, and that includes our boy Peyton Barber last week. Oh boy, what a world. Evan, do you have anybody else? Because I, I got one guy I wanted to ask you guys about. What about Buck Allen at home against the Saints? Only 4.5K. What, Reeves just rolled his eyes. Evan's not saying anything. You got crickets over here? I feel like this is a replay of like Kobe Fle your your Kobe Fleener week every week for you know half of the season. Wait, do I do I say Buck Allen every week? No, I'm kidding. Oh, I was gonna. I, I, was I, like, I actually really? say Buck Allen every week. Okay, so I just make it sure. I was like, wow, did I just have this Buck Allen <laughs> thing that I never knew about? No, I um, I, I'm I'm not sure yet. I really don't have a strong opinion. All right, so what are some of the other running backs you're looking? But at? you did four touches last week. Yeah, four, that's four that's an full issue. touches. That's four that's touches. dicey. Yeah, I, I, mean, I, I expected him to be much more involved last week, but he lost a second half fumble in the game before and Harbaugh has been like, you know, 
crazy adamant, you know, about like benching guys for loose balls. So um, something to keep in mind. Uh, Peyton Barber uh, at home. Uh, we discussed him mm-hmm. uh, against the Browns. Marlon Mack uh, looked really good last week uh, against the uh, the Jets, and now is a home favorite against the Bills. Um, man, I you know. I don't trust Marlon Mack and I really liked him coming out of college, but even as someone who really liked him coming out of college, I've still never been able to really trust him because he's such a boom bust player. Uh, But this is a really good spot uh, for him. Kareem Hunt uh, at home uh, against the, uh, the Bengals Uh, Zeke, I think will probably, you know, maybe be the chalk this week against a really bad Redskins run defense. Uh, oh, Saquon. Saquon is going to hit it really, really big uh, against Atlanta on uh, Monday night. And then on, in the Thursday night game, David Johnson. Uh, I, I'm surprised that the Cardinals are not favored in this game. Do you guys have any opinions on that? I think the Cardinals should be favored over the Broncos on Thursday night. I think I'm going to roll the dice with Royce Freeman in this game. That's I, I mean, it's single game, like single game slate. I'm I mean, it's the two worst run defenses in the NFL on Thursday night. It's it's one of those things. I I just so the David Johnson thing is crazy. Like I just don't know if they can exploit a good matchup. It really I, I want to believe. I think it's season long. You easily smash him, smash him in. It's not even a question. He averages so they're just like running him into like his guards on first down. He averages one point nine yards per carry on first down carry rushing attempts. Uh, he averages four and a half yards and every other, other, every other carry he gets outside of first downs. They just like literally line up on first down and they just slam him into the defense. That's like what they do on offense. This offense is like high school level, uh, high school level type of offense. They have no creativity. It's just a joke. Like it, how, like it's, it's hard for me. I've been betting the Fal- or the Cardinals a ton. I bet them three the past four weeks. Um, uh, if you want to bet him, you just wait because you get a better number tomorrow night because it's been moving in the other direction. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, I, I want to believe because of the matchup, everything lines up. I do like the I do like the take on on rolling out like even the showdown slate, rolling out some Royce Freeman though, because yeah. the, so the Broncos are a really good run team. They run the ball well all year. The problem is they've trailed for the most amount of snaps in the NFL. They they can never stay with the run because they're terrible. They're a bad football team. Uh, and Roy Streaming gets scripted out because he doesn't catch passes and Philip Lindsay's been better than him. So he leaves it. So he's not involved in the game that much, but if they do, if they're going to have a game where they control script and maybe score some touchdowns in the run game, like it's probably going to be him, you know, be the guy that gets those carries. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, I, I don't, I don't mind taking some showdown slots on, on, on Rolls Royce. All right. So let's talk wide receivers really quick. We got to get out of here. Evan, I know you wanted to talk about Tyree Hill at home this week against the uh, against the Bengals and the home road splits there's continue to be a little bit silly with Tyreek Hill well I just wanted to uh, you know kind of run this by you guys because the the road splits are getting to be like you know WTF is is going on here so uh, I would love for you guys to maybe just opine on why this is happening um, I just think I tend to think it's just it's still small sample variants. Everything that we do in the NFL is small sample. And that's why, you know, even just talking about like a three game stretch is I still feel like uncomfortable doing it. I mean, I feel like I have to do it, but um, you know, I, I feel uncomfortable at times talking about like trends from a three game stretch, you know, like, so, but do you guys have any explanations for Tyreek? I don't, I think it's just randomness. What about you, Reeves? Yeah, I mean, I don't have anything. I mean, looking at some of the splits, I mean, it's tough because, I mean, he's got, you, you know, it, your first instinct is like maybe it's a T.Y. Hilton thing and he, you know, is he not playing on the rug? You know, like he's he's good and because a lot of these road games are, you know, New England turf, you know, but then he's got these big games against the Chargers. He's got these big games against the Raiders on the road. Uh, there's just, I, I just, yeah, I just think it's variance. I think he's just that kind of player, you know, I mean, I saw – what was the tweet? I don't know if it was NFL research or someone had where he's got, you know, the – A.J. Green has, like, the, the most 50-yard touchdown since he, like – since he entered the league. But, like, then Tyreek has more than him in, like, a like a two-and-a-half-year sample, like, just 50-yard touchdown. It's just – he's just that guy, I think. I mean, you're going to get these huge plays. When they don't, he's going to have those lines that are just kind of, like, 60 yards, you know, kind of be in that range. Um, but then he's going to have those 140s. 
I mean, dude, that that third touchdown that he scored last week was just bananas. That was like, wild. They, catch- dude, who was it? Was was it Harmon that caught? He <laughs> Carmen tried to set himself up for the angle. Like he stopped. Like he was like, I'm gonna stop because I know I'm about to get dusted. I'm gonna cut off this angle. And you had no chance. He no chance. Right past him. It was like unbelievable, man. That was, in, it was uh, that- well, in uh, one of my <laughs> high stakes leagues uh, last week. We had we were down by like I mean fifty five or something entering the Sunday night and the Monday night and we had Mason Crosby and Tyreek and we came back and fucking won and I mean Ooh, I just I yeah I was like watching I was I can't believe that this happened yeah I I remember in my in my high stakes season long league the guy had like Brady. Edelman, Goskowski, and Sony Michelle, and I'm sitting there with Tyreek Hill, and I was, Ooh, I, right. I, yeah, I was up <laughs> a little bit to start, and I ended up winning by like four or five points. I'm like, this is just a beautiful, beautiful That's thing. Awesome. That third touchdown, though, like the guy's like, no, I'm not going to cover. Him. I'm just going to set up the tackle, and Tyreek takes off. It was great. All right, any other wide receivers we haven't touched on, Reeves, that you want to – I mean, listen, you, I think that you could totally, especially on the main slate, like you could pay up for Thielen at this point. Yes. Uh, so he's playing the Jets. Now, the Jets aren't going to have Buster screen, I still don't believe. But think about this, Buster screen, we always talk about these bad corners. He was playing over someone. Yeah, Let's, let me run explain. off. Let me run off these stat lines. The Jets have allowed to slot receivers on the season from last week backwards. Seven catches, 86 yards, and a touchdown. 11 catches, 126 yards and a touchdown. 11 catches, 142 yards. Nine catches for 122 yards. Eight catches for 81 yards and a touchdown. And eight catches for 100 yards and a touchdown. Adam Thielen leads the league in just about every wide receiver category you can come come up with. He leads the league in targets, receptions, and first downs on third down. He leads the league in uh, first down receptions. He's second in the league in yak yards. Leads the league in targets. Leads the league in everything. Uh, I mean, and this is a, he's, he's Don Hutton. <laughs> and he's just he's in a, the smash spot like the jets have just been getting roasted in this area of the field the entire season yeah that's i mean i always love this when people are like oh i hate that buster screens out that means i can't pick on them. you're picking on somebody worse than buster screen then like it's it's going to be a good spot evan any other wide receivers that you need to touch on no I, I think we uh we covered them all all right great fine we will not talk about will fuller then if you really don't want to <laughs> oh uh no I, I don't think we need to talk about him i mean he is the guy who has literally been out there running uh wind sprints he's exercising the last two, yeah two weeks i mean he's got six targets the last two two weeks he's been playing you know 90 percent of the snaps um and you know it's it, it's rough out there i mean and now he's facing the jag so i mean would reeves would you play him in a season-long league this week uh will fuller um at this stage i don't think so because we yeah. know hopkins is going to get his targets and hopkins also on dk is kind of underpriced he had over 18 ppr points in both the games against the jags last year and they only even played one half of watson um and the and the way they've been played against slot receivers i mean all the all their touchdowns are out of the slot they've allowed this season uh and they're kind of using like qt and that like extension of a run game type of role so i mean i'm not really high on will fuller all right, guys, we got to get off here. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Thanks so much for listening. If you're downloading this on the pod, thanks for Roto Grinders, Roto Worlds for sponsoring the show. I'm Eric. He's Reeves. He's Evan for uh, Kobe Fleener. We'll see you guys later. Peace. <laughs>